Those are great today. Tonight, 8.15 on Zeta 4. And we have another uh, Cooper City caller. Hello. Neil. Yeah. Uh, this is Harlan. How's it going, guys? Harlan, I can't believe it. How come you're over there and not over here, Harlan? No, 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 He's a lot more popular than you are, Harlem. His phone is ringing off the hook. Did you hear it? And that call waiting, you hear that? Mm-hmm. He's, uh, he's a class clown. He's a voted class clown. He's, uh, what does he look like, Harlan? Uh, <laughs> is he ugly? I like him. Really? He's, he's, he's obnoxious, you know? He, he... Hey, listen, all you got to do is, uh, you know, stuff a banana in his mouth and uh, shut him up. <laughs> So, so what's oh happening? Oh, my God. What's happening, Harlan? He said that, uh, did you hear what he said about you? Uh, where, well, you know, I wouldn't go as far as to wear a picture of you on the, well. Yeah, no, I, I understand you wear it uh, where it can't be seen, Harlan. Is that true? <laughs> you kind of cover it up? Well, I have, I have my Neil Rogers underwear. Which... Do you really? Okay. Oh, boy. Well, we're going to be playing close to you by the Carpenters in just a minute for you and me, Harlan. <laughs> How's it going? Boy, what a bunch of mumbling calling you yesterday, huh? I know. What kind of a show was that? Oh, Jesus Christ. I was going to call and I said, hey, no, he's going to be in a bad mood. Mm hmm and There's no way. Well, right. I'm always in a good mood when I hear from you, Harlan. Uh... Do you understand what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Pat and bagels. Huh? The bagels oh. are delicious. You notice how Harlan keeps changing the subject. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a radio show, man. That's all. I'm just a friendly guy. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah you're... Friendly, <laughs> friendly and desperate, you know. So, uh, oh, this is what I was going to ask you. Yeah, um, wait a minute. Before you ask me the question, let me ask you a question. How come at 16 after 8 on a uh, Thursday morning you're not in school yet? I, I... Huh? Listen, listen, I work at Toys R Us, and, and a Nintendo cart just came and scratched me in my face, and I'm not going to go to school with a big scrape on my face. Wait a minute. Oh, now, what, you run that by me again? Who gave you a big Seymour? Nintendo cart. Do you know what Nintendo is? Mm-mm. It's like, you know how the old Atari stuff where I work with all that kind of stuff? The mm -hmm. cartridges? Like Atari? Yeah. It's like that. So you have you have a big scratch on your face? Uh, it's not it's really nothing, but, you know, I don't want to... <laughs> well, listen, we've got this new head that maybe you'd want to put on your body. <laughs> the Oprah's head? No, not Oprah, the other one. <laughs> the amputated head. Oh, Jesus. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so, in other words, you used a little scratch on your face to stay home. Come on, Harlan. You just stayed home because you want to call this show. I did. All right. All right. You got it out of me. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, I'm not going to say anything about that. <laughs> Good, don't. What a line. Oh, uh, I was going to ask you, since there's no school Monday... There isn't? Oh, that's right. It's President's Day. If, if me and my friends, could, if we stop by, with, you know, to give you a Valentine's Day card or whatever, mm. would we be able to see it? Would we get in? Would Mung let us in? I, gu it? I guarantee you, Harlan, if you come by here, you'll get in. Trust me. Hey, you're the greatest, man. You're the greatest, pal. <laughs> pal. It's too good to me. Why not? You're, oh, you're a great guy. I mean, I want I want the audience to understand. Harlan is a, a nice guy. Not, he's not the best looking guy in the world, right? Not the best. Not the best. He's good. He's a good looking guy. But he's not he's not like um, Ricky, the photographer, right? Uh, no. I'm you're, no Ricky. Huh? I'm no Ricky. You know Ricky, don't you? Oh. You saw him at Specs, right? But, uh... Harlan, are we losing a conversation here? <laughs> No, yeah, I know, he can't follow. relate to it, you can't follow it. Well, I, I understand, you're putting on, you know, playing dumb, that always helps. But, oh, my God, come on, Bird, but there's, help me out here, somebody. No, you're on your own. No, there, but there's just something about Harlan, he's just one of those lovable, great, uh, am I right? He just, I don't know what it is. Hey, I love your show, man, you're the best. I listen to you every morning, I'm trying to get as many people as I can to listen to you. Just... Well, I heard that all of Cooper City listen to this show now, is that true? Hey, I did, man, I sit there, I, I... We know you did it, but that's not the question. Yeah, they are listening to you, they do. Great. A couple of them listen to, listen to Stan, which is, which is, I'm trying to get them out of it. Yeah, tell them to cure them of that habit. That could be habit for me. I mean, I'm, I'm not limp first, don't get me wrong, but... Right. <laughs> well, what, what is this? So you got to prove how macho you are? We didn't, nobody was questioning that. We believe you sound pretty macho to me. You sound like uh, maybe Hispanic, right? Are you Hispanic? Oh, God. See, that proves it right there. I mean, if you're a... Uh, you can't I'm, be, uh, I'm, a I'm a U.M. student. You can't, you can't be more macho than anybody Latin, okay? And if I could tell you all the Latin males that I've had sex with, okay, you couldn't count them, all right? Oh, man. That's See how open hard. this show is this morning? We have a new format this morning. The management doesn't know it yet, man, but we're going to just let it all hang out, so to speak. Do you follow? Are they going to mock me for being a... No, you're... Yeah, they can upset you. Now, listen, by the way, Bob, uh, when your dad called earlier, he said something about you want to move out of your house? <laughs> Anyway, listen, it's, uh, no, seriously, I, what I'm doing, I'm working ahead of a whole house full of terrific-looking guys that I can't get, you understand what I'm saying, that I can't get yeah. near. 
And uh, so far, I'm not a good start, and we're, we're working on it, okay? But listen, I can just sit around and uh, look, okay? Okay. Yeah, Bob's moving in, he said. <laughs> okay, listen, it's good hearing from you. Okay, great, thanks. Sir, this yeah. show has been just incredible. I feel like I've been in a torture chamber. Mm -hmm, I know. But uh, Me that's too. okay. Harlan's going to go try to find a date now. Oh, come on. And no, Harlan's a good guy. I've always, haven't I always said <laughs> yeah, nice yeah, things about you? Like, yeah. I've always been nice to you. In yeah, fact, uh, it could, you know, <laughs> if things become tough enough, you just let me know, Harlan. And, of course, uh, Bob and I are going to the house for a while now to... Have a little chat. We're going to have uh, talk about gambling. You go to the track? No, highlight. Oh, highlight. Well, I'll, I'll show you where the real uh, action is at. And uh, Tara, and, Tara I, and you are going to go and uh, you're going to give her some paraphernalia. That's correct. You know, invited me to help him get the screw out of his tire. And uh, moving right. How are you? Uh, yesterday's show gets a thumbs down. Okay. It just, it, it sounded like uh, something from the J. Michael show. Oh, no, yes, sir. Ah, no, come on. That, that, that was mine. That was opinion. the lowest. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just, it you got a hundred people yeah. talking at once, and they're giggling, and this one's talking at the same time as that one, and and you're sort of falling into a rut, too. What is that? Oh, That's since we're being critical this morning. What is the rut? The rut is sort of like every morning, it's like every young guy calls and it's like, hi, would you like to come to my house? You have a cute voice. How wait, old no, wait are you? A minute, wait a minute. We've been on for 25 minutes this morning. Is any young guy who called and I say, would you like to come to my house? I mean, but you do it every day. It's like... Well, of course, if they sound good, you're damn right. Maybe I'll strike gold one of these days, pal. Well, I mean, when you were on the AM, it was different. It was no, like... it was not different. When I was on the AM, we had all the... We had young guys coming into the show every day. But not every oh, day. Oh, when, when I was on the AM, it was different. Here we go with this propaganda. What are you, from the Stan Major Propaganda Club? I mean, it's... The show was not different on the AM, sir. The only thing was it sounded more muffled, okay? That was the only difference. <laughs> it's like you've lost your sense of balance since you went Yeah, I know. I'm unbalanced, sir. And that's why we're unbalancing you right off the phone, you <laughs> jackass. I'm unbalanced. No. Do you believe this guy? It's not true. Now, see, it's okay if Stan sits in there, not only trolls, but brings these Bring boring in. young ladies in there and lets them sit there. Okay, if you want to talk to Katie, <laughs> that's okay. See, here's a guy who's suffering again from that, uh, that penis thing. He just got a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's just part, it's been part of the show, pal, for over a year now, all right? That's my show. And take it or leave it. But don't give me this chance about how on the AM it was different. Are you out of your mind? In fact, on the AM, do you remember there was a period of time when I was going to go to Hawaii? Sure. When I was trolling, I mean madly, on oh, yeah. to find somebody to go, which didn't turn out, didn't work out. But uh, that well, went on for a month. Yeah. I'm sorry you didn't get to go on that trip because, you know, I'm they, not. Well, they were going to... Was down at the pot last night, and I want to. I want to tell you something. Alan, as I said before, can call this show any time he wants. Okay. Listen, this stuff. Are you following me, Harlan? I'm. I'm telling you. I'm sure he's listening right now. But I, I told him to go to the pot. I told him you're going to be there. You told him to go to the pot. Yes, <laughs> Alan. Why? Do you, is he one of those who's just a little bit slow on stuff <laughs> like that? Was it one or two, uh, Harlan? He's never done anything. Which call. number was it? Yeah, I know. Um, now, he, he turns out to be a very interesting young man. Yeah, he, like I said, he's, he's, uh, he's a class clown. Yeah, he sure is, and I'm going to take him home for some real comedy a little later on in the day, but uh, that's another story. Uh, oh, boy, what a shock that was. It was it was really amazing to me. Four. Hey, I'm a good friend of Alan. He talks about you all the time, yeah. Does he really? Well, I'm, lately I've been talking about him a lot, too, because I met him for the first time, let's see, on Monday night. Uh, he's not a bad guy. He's a great guy. Funny guy, I'm gonna stick with him in the variety show. Well, he is funny. I'd like to make him laugh. <laughs> and you know, you're so, talking about uh, so what? So Steve, Steve, let's get serious for just a minute, okay? <laughs> so in other words, Alan is obsessed with me. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think so. Is he really? I talk about you all the time. Constantly. Well, I'm obsessed with Alan too. I bet you we'd make a great team if I you know if so. you get the drift of what I'm saying, Steve. Yeah, I get your drift. Mm-hmm. Listen, you're talking about Ricky's restaurant yesterday. I mean, isn't Alan surprisingly good-looking for a guy who sounds, <laughs> who sounds like such a nerd on the phone? No, it's just a joke, Alan. Come on. Now, he's an interesting you know, guy. You know, it sounds like you're obsessed with him. Now, like, uh, have you and uh, Alan ever compared notes in the locker room or stuff like that? <laughs> it's just a joke, Steve, okay? No, it's no, just no, a we don't have joke. to eat together now. You don't, have, you don't do what together? Yeah. A couple of minutes to six, one of our Cooper City callers called in. And, you know, these kids today, man, are just so emotional. He's jealous. Now, this is the same young man who was so excited that Alan and I had struck up this wonderful relationship 
because it uh, took some of the heat off of him. Remember that way back when? Oh. You don't want to mention Bob's name this morning, although Bob threatens to call in as Alan Jr. <laughs> this morning, which is okay with us, but he was mocking Alan and uh, doing all this other stuff, and it indicated very clearly to me that Bob is jealous. He's not getting enough attention. Now, Bob, if you're listening, if you're up this early this morning, I'll be delighted to give you all the attention you want, baby, okay? All the attention you can handle, and then some. So don't worry about things. Things are okay. They're going to be just fine, <laughs> as somebody I know would say. Well, they like this screenless crap, you know that? That we again want to thank our dear friends at Lulu City High. <laughs> well, we don't want to overdo it, because there are people in the audience get very upset about that. A lot of... Um, cantankerous people out there. And you're making them into big celebrities and you're always saying you don't want to do that. All you want to do is just get a hold of those young students over there and corrupt their morals. <laughs> I have news for you. I couldn't corrupt their morals because they don't have any, okay? 25 after 7 on Zeta, we want to thank uh, Tara. Playing over the years that everything in life kind of like fits together. Yes, okay? it does. And I told Alan, Alan that the other day and he just, he wouldn't believe me. Uh, where are we going next? Now, see, you're getting upset. I can tell by the look on your face. You really believe that I'm going to invite all those prepubescent kids over to my house and try to, you know, have a little fun with them on Friday. <laughs> and, you know, the more I think about it, it sounds incredibly appealing to me. See, because when I'm in my house, there are a lot of rooms. It's not like being, you know, in this little tiny studio that we're in. There are a lot of rooms. There's places to go and hang out. Mm -hmm. And like while music is playing. We could kind of go and check out some of the rooms. I have this one workout room that doesn't have anything in it yet. But it does have a floor. <clears throat> 13 till 8 on Zeta 4 as we work out together on a Wednesday morning. Let's... That isn't true. Have I ever said anything <laughs> bad about him? Have I said that he's like so the... It's, nobody can compete with Alan. He is, physically, he has this incredible appearance. His brain is just is not there, okay? They can't give all the goods out to the same people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be fair. Now, Bob is a different sort. Bob's got, like, a lot of both, which is unusual. Holland, of course, has neither. got... What? He's got neither. <laughs> and I, didn't, I didn't say that. See, you're, like, uh, making these self-deprecating remarks. Harlan is just fine. Believe me, nobody would lose out with Harlan. He's uh, got a great disposition and a great body and a great mind and he can dance too and he can dance up a storm <laughs> i just had something crawl out of my mouth i think it's alive in here what what was that you going to read the weather bob it's station well i had one incredible experience well there were several first of all we get to the tropicana after that long nightmarish trip all the way out there it takes forever to get there we get to the hotel and it place is jam-packed it's nine o'clock on a friday night and finally get to the registration desk, and I already had confirmed reservations. You know, they send you the sheets in the mail and guaranteed on your credit card and that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, they work and she says to me, oh, well, uh, I don't understand this, but uh, there are people in one of those rooms. In other words, they sold one of the two rooms out from underneath us. Okay? Mm. So now she's checking in a computer, and she's having a nervous breakdown. Well, I've got these two rooms, and i got one bed and a rollaway. And uh, uh. I said, hey, that's not what we wanted, and that's not what we were guaranteed, you know. And then finally, after all kinds of Michigas, she gives us two rooms, one on the eighth floor, one on the first floor, okay? So two of the people go up to the eighth floor, <laughs> and we go up to the first floor and open the door, and guess what? It's not the kind of room at all It's uh, that we wanted. And we, I called down and went crazy. Okay, we'll give you 555, and they got to clean it up. It'll be 10 minutes, and it's just what you wanted, and uh, two beds, and all this other. <laughs> and we're sitting there waiting, and all of a sudden, the door opens in this room, and these two big, enormous women, they look like female basketball players, come waltzing in. They had sold them the rooms uh, <laughs> while we were waiting. I mean, these people, man, were so screwed up, and it's unusual because the Tropicana is usually pretty sharp. Yeah, I thought they had it together. I've out been there. there a few times before, but they were totally out of control. I, in fact, I.